In the aftermath of the Republican Party's first official primary debate, President Biden released a hard-hitting campaign ad emphasizing the power of women, and it was also a call to action for women to use that power to crush the Republican Party at the ballot box in 2024. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. Maybe check out my Patreon. I'd appreciate the support. All right, so obviously for the past at least two weeks, it seems like this channel has been hyper-focused on the various failures of the Republican Party and Donald Trump in particular, because that's dominated the news cycle in many respects. And while President Biden has been quietly running the country and, you know, approving federal aid uh, for the situation in uh, the wildfire situation in Maui uh, and other things, the Republican Party and, and Donald Trump have been making headlines by all kinds of insane antics. And in the aftermath of that first primary debate, uh, President Biden released this campaign ad as a reminder that, you know, it's still an election cycle and there are Democrats running and President Biden himself is running for re-election. And it's a good ad. Uh, we're going to watch it together and then we're going to unpack it. But the the theme of this ad is about the power of women and how, as we saw, not generally speaking, I mean, women tend to support the Democratic Party more than Republicans anyway. Um, but that loyalty or that the cohort uh, turned out in force uh, during the 2022 uh, November primaries because of the conservative movement's success in finally overturning Roe v. Wade and stripping federal abortion protections, right? That galvanized women voters across this country. And so clearly the Biden campaign and Democrats intend to try to harness that energy even further because it doesn't seem like it's particularly exhaustible. Uh, and so this ad speaks to that. And uh, we're going to play it and unpack it together. Reproductive health care decisions are among the most personal a woman will ever make. They are choices that should be made by you and your doctor. And the last people who should be involved are these guys. First of all, I'm the one that got rid of Roe v. Wade. Florida Governor DeSantis quietly signed into law one of the nation's strictest abortion bans. Governor DeSantis, you signed a six-week abortion ban in Florida. I believe in a culture of life. If I were president of the United States, I would literally sign the most conservative pro-life legislation that they can get through Congress. Do you believe in punishment for abortion, yes or no, as a principle? Uh, the answer is that there has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. President Biden and Vice President Harris are determined to restore Roe v. Wade, and they will never allow a national abortion ban to become law. As long as they are in office, decisions about your body will be made by you, not by them. That's an excellent campaign ad. Um, it's substantive. It deals with an incredibly um, relevant issue. So, I mean, it combines substantive policy with also something that's, you know, highly controversial, right? Like, it, it's a sensational talking point. Um, so, it, like, it blends policy with culture war in, in the perfect way. And um, as the campaign ad notes, many of these Republicans uh, either, like, enthusiastically or tacitly support, um, you know, really restrictive anti-abortion laws, and some have even hinted that they would, like, gesture favorably in the direction of a nationwide abortion law. Now, people are going to say, well, listen, I I've heard some people say this, that, well, Roe v. Wade was overturned on President Biden's watch, and that's true. But the fact of the matter is, that's a Supreme Court decision. In order to codify Roe v. Wade, that is something that has to pass the legislature. And to the Democrats' credit, under Biden's leadership and the leadership of Speaker Pelosi, they were able to get uh, legislation, uh, which essentially codified Roe v. Wade, passed the House of Representatives, but it hit a hard block in the Senate because they couldn't get enough votes to get through that filibuster-proof majority, which I think is about 60, right, because they would need effectively 10 Republicans to do it. No Republican was going to sign on to federal leg you know, legislated uh, federal voting protections. And then you had Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin. Actually, I think Sinema was the exception. Joe Manchin, if I remember correctly, um, was unwilling to break the filibuster to pass it. I think that's the case. Maybe it was the both of them. So in order to protect women's reproductive rights, not only do we need to prevent Donald Trump or Republicans from taking the White House, we also in 2024 have to expand the um, Democrats' majority, first in the Senate, with progressives, or at least people progressive enough who are willing to break the filibuster if need be, right? That should be something that voters force out of the people they vote for. Hey, you want my vote? You need to tell me that if you don't have enough votes to break the filibuster, you will vote yourself to do a filibuster carve out. You won't be Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema. And then we also have to reclaim the majority in the House of Representatives, okay? But yeah, 
This is an extremely hard-hitting ad, which weaponizes the Republican Party's candidates' own words against them, I think, to great effect, including, I mean, again, you have Donald Trump taking credit for the, the repeal of Roe v. Wade or the, uh, the overturning of Roe v. Wade, and then you have him openly saying, and this goes back to, I think, his first primary campaign, I mean, and it, he said there has to be a form, if you're going to criminalize abortion, there has to be a form of punishment against women, which is wildly unpopular, I think, even for conservative women, which is part of the reason why so many you know, strict anti-abortion laws have been defeated, have been crushed in prominent conservative states, including like Kansas and Kentucky. So anyway, uh, it's a great ad. Uh, we need to see more of this from uh, the Biden campaign. I'm sure we will as the election cycle heats up. But uh, remember to vote blue, no matter who. I shouldn't say no matter who. Remember to vote blue, especially for those who are going to, you know, who are willing to throw elbows in politics and say, listen, when it comes to crucial pieces of legislation like reproductive rights, federal voting protections, things like that, if if we can't get a surplus needed to break the filibuster to get this stuff passed, um, make sure that you tell people, I'll vote for you, but you have to promise to be willing to break the filibuster on these crucial pieces of legislation if need be. So anyway, um, yeah, looking forward to future ads from the Biden team, and hopefully they continue that trend of solid work.